everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got one of these. <laughs> this is a uh, classical guitar of some kind, or a nylon string guitar of some kind. Now, I don't typically work on these kinds of guitars, but uh, if you're a family, you get the exception. Uh, as well, this doesn't need a whole lot, I don't think, to get it up playing a little bit better. You can see we got a broken string. It's out from here floating. And it's just kind of dirty and needs cleaned up. Uh, there's a couple of things I'm going to look at, you know, that are just kind of questionable. But beyond that, I don't think it needs a whole lot. So uh, we'll set it down and get started on tearing this thing apart. So step one is, as usual, get these old strings off of here. Um, because they're broken, I can't really do an accurate measurement on string height or any of that. So we'll just get them off of here first. Tuners are a little difficult to turn, so we could probably use some oil in on those. Actually, that tuner looks kind of busted. Um, the more I look at it, it's not looking great. I think you can see it here. This tuner seems to be broken. The plastic part itself. Um, we're going to have to do something about that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut these now. Um, I think I have an extra set of classical tuners floating around here. Um, I know I only have one if I do have any. And yeah, these are pretty busted up. I really hadn't noticed it, but this one here, you can see the plastic is mostly missing on the top, and then this one is broken. Um, we'll go ahead and pull those off of there once we're done. Let me lower some tension off of the other side. I'm trying to get these strings off of here. We can really see what's going on there. This one's missing a screw. Man, these are just really missing parts, aren't they? I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these. All right. Um. In order to get a better idea what's going on here, I'm going to cut every one of these kind of short so I can actually see what I'm doing. They're all junk as it is. I'm not saving any of these things. I got new strings for this, so we just got to get this off of here. Those uh, long string ends are probably why I didn't notice all of the problems we're having up here. There's just so much going on, it's hard to see.
All right. We got them strings off of that headstock. We'll start working on taking it apart now. See if I can do it without looking at it. All right, so all them screws out of there. This should actually come out now. And you can start to see uh, that screw was missing. So that it's amazing we didn't actually lose that, uh, that gear. And yeah, that's just busted up. The other two don't look, well, no, I take that back. This one's broken as well. Uh, the first one doesn't look too bad. Um, what I'll do is I'll go look around to see if I can find some close replacements. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be able to save if we're going to have to mix and match parts. Or if I can just find some new tuners to just put in here. I don't really know what I have. I know that I don't have much in regards to uh, nylon string tuners with these plastic ends because I don't really work on those so I don't really have a lot yeah this one is so broken that it's not wanting it letting it come out of the hole as I hold it together. So we can see there, this one's broken. This one's an entirely different color and it's broken. Um, yeah, I'll go look and see what we've got for tuners. Um, to maybe try and replace those with something that's gonna work. Some quick dusting while we're here. I'll go find some tuners and then we'll uh, see what we got. All right, so I got this set out and I actually pulled one off of here. Um, this set does not actually line up with the holes in the headstock on um, this base, not very well, but I can just steal the posts from here and I think that's what I am going to do. Um, <laughs> As well, the uh, the actual turning knobs aren't the same. It's kind of making do with what I've got. Basically, all of these are broken in one way or another or don't match. So what I think I'm going to do is just basically take uh, these six, put them on this plate, and then put them back in. That way we have the original plate, so it has the original footprint that it had, and uh, these knobs that were on it, but they're not broken. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I'll take start taking these apart, set all of these parts to the side. And just start taking them apart. I'll do these one at a time so I can keep track of everything. Yeah, that's busted. Because I have all the gears that go with this, I'm gonna try to use them again. So I gonna try to keep spare parts going back in my box here I'll probably clean these up before I go putting anything together um, I can just take these out, looks like, and I could use some cleaning. So 
That should be easy enough to do. So my good parts, I needed one screw from the old set, are here, here, and here. Those are good. And because of course I have, uh, I have these parts, I don't have to charge for any parts. Uh, you know, this is all just spare parts that I have, so um, it's going on this guitar for free and keeping everything, you know, kind of a uniform look. So I think this is definitely the way to go on this. You know, I'm not really a huge fan of this whole mix and matching parts, but on this particular example, it's the best thing I can do. Good spares. These are spares. I want those. All right, so now I have all of these parts, and I don't see any reason why these couldn't take a quick trip through the ultrasonic cleaner. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me grab my little bucket. I'll just put these in here. going to fall through. Yeah, we'll do those separate. So I'll go take this to the ultrasonic cleaner and let it go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That should uh, clean those up and we can work on putting everything back together then. Well, this is my last blue towel on that roll, which means this is the last of the three uh, rolls that I bought at the beginning of last year. So we got pretty far on that roll. Um, they're out of those rolls. We start pulling stuff out of here and drying it off. I did just go get me some new uh, shop towels. <sighs> Went to the uh, Sam's Club and bought like 24. So if three lasted me a year, that means uh, 24 will last me four. <sighs> we'll see about that. <laughs> but uh, those cleaned up pretty good. What I was really looking at cleaned up well is the metal parts. They look a lot better. Yeah, and just like this one, this one looks really good now. You can see that's a lot cleaner. I've still got a little bit of uh, foggy spots in there, but they're looking better.
Yeah, those are looking way better. Cool. Um, I think we have a slight problem there, but it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. Straighten those out. That's already better. So those are clean. Now I'm going to do the little screws and uh, we can start putting stuff back together. Well, we got this thing looking good, I think. You can see these tuners. Um, I did some lubricating. They spin pretty well now. We should be able to put these back in. And everything should line up and they should be nice and clean. I'm hoping everything lines up. Yeah. Cool. And we got to keep the original plate that they were on. So they've got that original look. And they're not broken. Now they've still got some like cracks and some wear because, you know, it's older, so it needs to look older. But they're clean and they should be totally functional. So now I can just screw these back in. I'll go ahead and get this finished up. We can work on something else. Uh, we got those tuners sorted out. Now what I'm starting to look at is the bridge here and I'm thinking it might be lifting a little bit too much. Um, I get the edge to stay down. Which it just doesn't want to do. It, uh, yeah, it rides in there. Oh, that's quite a bit. And really badly out on the wings. Um, I got a feeling this bridge is, is going to come off. Um, if I set that aside, and we use the actual tool. That goes in, oh, every bit of an eighth inch, and then some, right underneath that bridge. Like right in the middle. Yeah. Um, my problem here is this is finished on top, and I really don't want to go sticking heat on it. I'm kind of curious if I can't just break it loose like you see that that is no heat just left or right and we are in there that much I mean that's yeah this thing's coming off I'm gonna have to take this off one way or another um, I, once again this is finished on top so I don't really want to go sticking heat straight on the finish uh, I'm not real sure what the the best method here is it might be we'll just heat the tool stick a piece of tape across the back and work it in um, that might just be the best method I think we'll probably do that so I'll get me a piece of tape to go across here to protect the finish um, and I'll warm the tool and we'll work it that way. It's going to take a little bit of setup, so I'll go ahead and get that started going. And we'll work on taking this bridge off of here, I guess. This is all set up and I'm kind of heating my tool over here. Um, I've tried this a time or two and it cuts through that glue pretty well. Or at least I thought it did. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cutting. Running this left or right, trying to get everything unstuck.
got to make sure this thing stays warm so it takes uh, pulling it out a little bit more often and making sure it's well heated. All right. like that. Yeah, there's a little bit there. Um, I did have the foresight to mark around the bridge where it goes, and there's a quite a bit that uh, <laughs> has finish on it. Um, quite a large area that you know just in that front where it's it's got finish ouch it uh you know it, it would never stick well you can see it on the bridge there this whole front section and where the wings are it's just it was never going to stick well with that finish underneath there and then i uh, you know this this it came loose um what's interesting is that it was the front edge that uh, was finished over and it was the back edge that was really loose so I think it just maybe didn't have good glue contact the first time so we'll uh, clean this up and uh, glue that back on there let me get cleaned up a little bit with my heat I don't need it anymore and we can move on I've started scraping off all this old finish and I'm just using um, this blade here I've got you know, I'm choked up pretty tight on it, so it can't really flex. And all I gotta do is just scrape across. And that removes all that finish from underneath where the bridge is. I don't know how well you can see that line that runs like this, but there's a line that I had, uh, with this exact blade, just kind of marked at the front of the bridge. So I'm just taking off up to that point. And that will make for a better gluing surface with no finish on there. back line is totally clean it's that front line that was not so once we get that clean and the sides just a little bit we'll be ready to glue this thing all the way back down it won't take long I think we're good we're ready to stick that back on there like that okay so um, I already cleaned off the back well enough I need glue and a paintbrush and we will uh, get that glued on there all right so I think I've got everything together I recently bought a, uh, a bridge clamp that works for pinned bridges where it's, uh, it uh, goes through the holes and then clamps that way um, obviously I can't use that on here but I can still use these uh, edge pieces to help push the wings down. So I'm gonna try to be using it this time as well. Um, which means I gotta have leather for everything. So let me sh make sure I've got leather everywhere I want it. I wanna put a little pieces on the, uh, the inside of the clamps so we don't mar up the inside of the guitar. Let's stick that to the side. All right, let's put some glue down. I 
want to get a nice thin coat covering the entire thing. Good coverage is key. That's looking good. I'm going to put a little bit on the bridge side just to be safe. All right. I think we're ready to stick this down. Make sure I put it on the right way, of course. is right where it was. Press that in, see if we can't clean up some glue right now. Wow. I can still see all the lines. going to be just about perfect. Let me get a good look. Yeah. yeah. It's looking really good. I just want to make sure that it doesn't slide too much. And then I'll try to put these clamps in here. I'm not sure if these have enough Right. Looks like it'll be fine. All right, that's looking good. So then what we can do is we can Push these ones down and they'll help push the wings down. I can see that working. That's cool. All right, I got quite a bit of glue squeeze out on that front edge. So try to clean that up. Uh, give that a few hours to dry and it would should be perfect. Uh, might need a little bit of glue cleanup after it's totally dry, but we should be good to go. Um, while that's drying, I think I'm going to find something else to do. The fretboard looks a little uh, dull. Could use some cleaning. So we'll probably do that while this is drying. As soon as I get everything cleaned up from this. All right, so while that's drying, we can work a little bit on the frets. I wanted to make sure that they were level. Um, obviously, there's no real neck adjustment. Uh, so what we've got is what we've got. And they look, they actually look really good. You know, you shouldn't be wearing too much on these kinds of frets with uh, the nylon strings. So I'm thinking all I need to do here is uh, polish those up. So I've got the micro polishing pads out, the ones that I always use. Um, I've been asked fairly recently about the stuff that I use and there is a link 
in the description. Uh, you know, there's like a list of stuff that I use in the description with links to everything that's in there. Um, if I leave something out, you can always leave a comment. And I'm sure somebody will help you out there if I don't. But these are in there in case you were looking for them. It's not the exact ones that I use, but it is one that's available online. They're pretty much the same though. Anyways, these are just like, they're basically the same thing as sandpaper. They just go really high grit and they have their own proprietary grit. Um, I always end up rubbing them off, so I have started marking them with Sharpie on the side and tally marks so I know which one to do first and so on. I'm also not bothering to protect the board on this one. I'm going to clean the board with a razor blade when we're done. This is more of a cosmetic thing on a nylon guitar, getting these nice and shiny. Um, you know, with the really smooth strings, you probably won't notice much. But, you know, get it looking good. That's good. All right. There's already an improvement in color. All right, that's looking pretty good. Those are looking nice and shiny. So that finishes up those. Now I need to get a razor blade so we can clean that fingerboard. So what I'll do is just go through here. And clean that board. Now these, uh, these nylon guitars, the classical style ones, they're going to have a rectangular fingerboard. So it's probably as thick as it is here. Is it down? It's down there. Or fairly close. Yeah. And it's also going to be flat. There's no radius in this, which actually makes this step a lot easier. On the radius boards, you have to work across the radius. On here, this doesn't take nearly anything at all. All right, clean that off. <sighs> Set that back up there, I'll go grab some oil, we'll oil that and it'll be looking really good. All right, we shake that up. We just do a bead. I'll rub that in with my fingers. And then we'll wipe off the excess. All right, that's looking really good. Um, this is probably as far as I'm going to go with this tonight. Because we got to wait for that to get done. So I'll let this sit overnight like this now, waiting for that glue to dry. 
and then we can move on sometime tomorrow. Now that I'm done gluing this thing up, I'm actually ready to start putting strings on here. So I've got this set of um, Martin strings. I'm not super familiar with these classical guitars, and this was supposed to be done on the cheap. So these are fairly inexpensive strings that I'm going to put on here. Um, you know, these are ball end strings, which, you know, I would say that most classical players are not probably fond of. But this was supposed to be done easy and cost effective. So that's what we're going on this. Um, this is going to still take me some time with these nylon strings. So uh, I'll probably stop filming and go ahead and just get her done. So I've got strings on here and I've started to measure this at the 12th fret, which is where the body joins. And it's high enough this doesn't do me any good. Um, I've been looking to see what this is supposed to be. Uh, the Yamaha website says it's supposed to go from about 150 thousandths to 125, which these nylon string, these classical guitars are supposed to be higher than like the steel ones would be. This is higher than that. The back edge of the thing I usually use to measure is about 165 thousandths thick and there's plenty of room in there. So I'm going to just go ahead and kind of loosen this back up and take some height off the saddle. Kind of an arbitrary amount, just enough that I know we're going to finally be in range. Uh, so it'll hopefully be closer, but yeah. It is tuned up, and um, if you're just playing up to the third fret, it plays pretty good. You can definitely feel that you're pushing a little hard, though, even for these nylon strings. Um, so all I'm going to do is loosen this up, and I should be able to just slide this saddle out, and uh, we should be good to take a little bit of height off of there. So we got the saddle lowered, and I've tuned it back up. And I'm starting to check the action here, and it's still really high. I mean, it's really hard for me to tell at this point. It's about, it's sitting on the high part now, so it's less than 165 thousandths. It's still just a little bit higher than I'd like it to be. Um, I'm going to take another, oh, uh, 30 thousandths off of this saddle. Um, that's going to get this in range of where it should be. What I can do is I can kind of use the wedge still. It gets bigger past the measurements. I don't really have any good actual like gauges for measuring stuff like this. Um, I'm going to get this into range and it's going to be what, it, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be way better than it was, but it's going to be as good as I can get it. Um, this saddle is actually already getting really low on this guitar and I'm not it's not worth putting in more work than I'm going to put into it. It's going to be good enough for what this is. So I'm going to go ahead and lower it another 30 thousandths or so at the saddle, and it will be playing way better than it was. I, I, even now, when I was kind of tuning it up and just kind of playing around with it, making sure we were good and stretched and we were up to tune, it plays better than it did before I took any height off of it, like noticeably. So if I take off a little bit more and get it like into a good range, it's going to be basically as good as you're going to get out of this thing. Um, fortunately, that means I have to detune it again. I am so tired of detuning and tuning this thing. These nylon strings, they stretch so much. It's such a pain to tune. I'm going to be happy to done with it. But we're almost there. So push through and we'll be done here pretty quick. So I really wanted to get a good idea where this actually was at. So uh, what I've done is I've measured my um, my fret rocker, and I'm just going to set it right in here. And it is about 60 thousandths of an inch thick. I say about. It is. It's 60 thousandths of an inch thick. So I can use that as the, uh, the basis and then measure off of that at the 12th fret. And we're sitting at 90 thousandths there, which puts us at, I, I mean, it's just a hair under 90. Well... Yeah, it's just a hair under 90 thousandths, which puts this at 150 thousandths of an inch, which is right actually what I was aiming for. Um, 
the less than optimal side is the uh, the trouble side here where we're still sitting just a hair below 190 thousandths. I'd like for it to be lower, but there's really not any saddle left to do that with. Um, this is going to be as good as this gets. You can see here, there's really just not enough saddle to take this any lower. So this is what it's going to be. Um, it's fine. It'll be playing good. It'll be playing better than it was. Um, we're almost done with this thing. There's just a few little things. I want to go maybe get the uh, Renaissance wax out and do the top just to make it nice and finished up. And then I think we should be good to go here. Everything else is looking pretty good. Just about done uh, waxing this. I'm using the, uh, the Renaissance wax. It works really good for a multitude of uh, finishes. I, you just put a little bit on, take a clean cloth, and you got to really kind of work it. But it's it's really coming out pretty good. On these older finishes, the Renaissance wax is really kind of the best thing you can do. Um, it's coming out nice and shiny. It's looking really good. Um, I think we're just about done here. I think I'm going to make sure this is tuned up and we're going to play it. is planting way better than it was. By no means am I going to say this is absolutely perfect, but I was asked to do this on the relatively cheap side, and so going as about as fast as I can on this thing, um, this is this is really good. Um, once again, I am not a classical guitar person. I don't play them all that often. I, you can probably tell by how uncomfortable I am with this big wide neck. I don't set them up. This is not my thing, but I did this one the best I could under, um, you know, trying to keep it pretty cheap. And I think it's really good. It, you know, it plays fairly easily. Uh, it's cleaned up real well. Uh, you know, those nice polished frets, a nice clean fretboard, and uh, the waxing on the uh, body. It's cleaned up really well. It's pretty good. Um, I'm I'm happy with it. I'm hoping the customer will be happy with it as well. So thanks for watching on this little uh, thing I don't usually do. <laughs> you enjoyed, and I will see you later.